Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify the pictures that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture and select it, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears in the ribbon with the Format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to format selected pictures. Note that this contextual tab only appears within your presentation if you have an image selected in your presentation. The buttons available in the Adjust button group on this tab allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your presentation. To remove the background from a selected picture, click the Remove Background button and you will see the Background Removal Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. PowerPoint will then display the area that it will not keep in a purple color. You can use the Mark Areas to Keep or Mark Areas to Remove buttons to change your mouse pointer into a pencil that allows you to draw straight lines that indicate sections of the picture to keep or remove, depending on which button you clicked. You can also click the Delete Mark button to remove errant marks that you create. When you are ready to remove the background, click the Keep Changes button. If you wish to cancel the changes, you can click the Discard All Changes button to cancel the process. You can click the Corrections button that appears in the Adjust button group to select from preset adjustment options shown in the Sharpen Soften and Brightness Contrast sections. Note that selecting the Picture Correction Options command at the bottom of the dropdown will display the Picture Corrections category within the Format Picture Task pane in PowerPoint. We will examine changing the settings within the Format Picture Task pane in the following sections within this chapter. The Picture Color drop-down button allows you to select one of the many colors to apply to the image. You can also select different color saturation and tonal levels by using this button. You can roll over the More Variations command to select a color choice from the palette of colors that appears. You can click the Set Transparent Color command and then click on a color within the image to remove that color from the image and replace it with transparency. You can click the Picture Color Options command to once again open the Format Picture Task pane and then set Advanced Color and Correction options for the selected image. You can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your presentation. First, set your desired compression settings within this dialog box. If you only wish to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures within your presentation, check the Apply Only to This Picture checkbox. Once you have the settings you desire, click the OK button to compress the selected pictures in your presentation. Note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display as smaller graphic files tend to load faster. This will also only work on pictures like JPEG and GIF files. You can click the Change Picture button to open the Insert Picture dialog box. You can then select a picture to substitute for the currently selected picture without resetting any formatting or size adjustments that you have already made to that picture. The last button in the Adjust section is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset any changes that you have made to a picture. Also note that this button contains a drop-down arrow that allows you to reset either the formatting only or both the formatting and the sizing applied to the image by choosing your desired option from the drop-down menu of choices. The next group that appears within the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles button group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how that style will affect your selected image directly in your presentation before you actually click on a style to select it. To add an image border to a selected image, you can also click the Picture Border drop-down button and then click on the color of the border that you want to apply. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by using the Picture Border drop-down button as well. If you roll over the Weight command in the Picture Border button's drop-down menu, you can then select a different line thickness from the choices that are available. Also, you can roll over the Dashes command in the same drop-down menu to select a dash style for the line versus using the default solid border. You can click the Picture Effects drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories available for use on your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over a stylistic category to display a listing of the assorted styles within that category. 
When you hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles shown in the side menu, it will also be shown as a preview on the selected image within your presentation. You can then click on the style that you like in order to actually apply it to the picture. You can click the Picture Layout button to convert the selected picture into one of the SmartArt graphic styles shown. This allows you to incorporate images into your SmartArt and also add supplemental text. Simply select the style of SmartArt to apply from the choices shown in the drop-down menu. In the Arrange button group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement and text wrapping of a selected image in the presentation. If you have overlapping images within your presentation, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order in which the images overlap one another. You can click the Selection Pane button to toggle the display of the selection pane at the right side of your presentation on or off. The selection pane shows the selectable objects, such as pictures, that you have inserted within your presentation. You can click the Align drop-down button to choose from one of the available alignment options displayed within the drop-down menu of choices. The Group button is not often allowed to be used in conjunction with images, but is often useful when dealing with shapes. If you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your presentation, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for a selected image in your presentation from the drop-down menu of Rotation Choices. In the Size button group, you will find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button, and then click and drag inward on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic to mark those sections of the image as parts that will be removed. You can then click the Crop button again to crop the selected parts of the image away. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by clicking the Crop button again and then dragging the cropping handles back outwards to restore parts of the image that were lost and then clicking the Crop button again. You can also click the Reset Picture button in the Adjust button group to reset the picture back to its original state. You can crop an image to fit a selected shape, or you can choose to crop an image to fit a selected dimension ratio, like portrait or landscape. To crop an image to fit a selected shape, click the drop-down button under the Crop button, and then roll over the Crop to Shape command. You can then select a desired shape from the side menu of choices that appears. To crop a picture to a selected aspect ratio, Click the drop-down button underneath the Crop button, and then roll over the Aspect Ratio command. You can then select one of the Aspect Ratios from the side menu that appears. You can also use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the Shape Height or the Shape Width spinner boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. To make more specific changes to the image size, use the Format Picture pane. To open this pane, click the Size and Position dialog box launcher button in the lower right corner of the Size button group. In the Size section of the Size and Properties category in the Format Picture pane, you can enter the height and width into the spinner boxes provided. To adjust the picture's relational aspect, meaning its height to width ratio, ensure that the Lock Aspect Ratio checkbox is deselected, and then enter the height and width independently. You can enter a degree of rotation to apply by using the Rotation Spinner button. You can also use the Scale Height and Scale Width Spinner boxes to enter a percentage to scale the image by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the Lock Aspect Ratio and Relative to Original Picture Size check boxes as needed when making size and scale changes to lock the aspect ratio and to determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. You can also check the Best Scale for Slideshow checkbox and then select a resolution from the adjacent drop-down to scale the image for the best appearance within a slideshow. To reset any changes you have made, you can click the Reset button at the bottom of this section. After making your adjustments, you can click the X in the upper right corner of the pane to close it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www dot teachucomp dot com forward slash free.